Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 7 of Direwolf20's server play series, hanging out on Forgecraft 1. Uh, Mysterious Ages, Soren, Marathi, and Tog are all hanging out with us. Pahimar also gracing us with his presence on TeamSpeak. And uh, no microphone for Soren, because where he's currently living, it's significantly later than where it is at where I'm at. He's, uh, you know, off in another part of the world, and it's like 3 a.m., and he's like, I guess I'll come record for you, because I know people were asking for me. Yes, yeah, Soren. Like, let me tell you, like, the first couple videos of Forgecraft, people are like, where's Soren? That was, like, question number one. Hey, Soren, does this mean you can bug your brother now? Yeah, because that needs to happen. You know what else needs to happen? I need to get some copper. Because I need to explain to you guys a problem that I'm having, why I'm having it, and... Yeah, that's pretty much all I need to do. And I need to demonstrate it by making a trealizer, which I already have, so never mind. I guess I already have a trealizer. When did I get that? Did I make that? I guess I did. Somebody gave me honey drops. Oh, I know what happened. We were testing this, uh, so that's actually a cheated in trealizer. We were testing things. We thought there was a bug, determined there wasn't, and then, yes. So that's a cheated in trealizer. So what I really need is a trealizer. I guess I really need honey too, though. Because I'm not going to be able to demonstrate this without honey. You can't put anything else in the trealizer, right? Honeydew. Well, I don't have honeydew either. Nope. And you're screwed. Pretty much. Oh well, I'll at least get this thing uh, started going for the time being. Trealizer, go! Uh, long story short, uh, when when Sengir decided that he was um, not going to make it so easy to make biomass anymore, what he did is he reduced two things. I thought he only reduced one, and I can't demonstrate this without honey drops, so unfortunately I can't show you the details of this. Uh, but basically what Sengir decided I've got honey to do... What's that? What you want that? Me, do you want me to put a stack of honey drops in the red chest? I don't have an ender chest yet. There's one in spawn. Is that? Is that? Okay, yeah, if you want to do that. I will make a run over spawn. I have a, I've got a spare ender chest kicking about as well I could bring to you. No, no, that's okay. I'll, I'll get it all. Yes, Pahamo was trying to figure out why the server was extremely laggy a few minutes ago. We just restarted it, and it seems to be behaving now. Oh yeah, look at that. The chest of sharing. Global share chest. Nice. And honey drops. You rock, dude. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, so what happened actually is number one he reduced the amount of uh, biogas that you get from saplings uh, and it's actually determined by the sappiness quality of your sapling so let me just pull out um, a vanilla sapling here and if you'll notice these are actually apple oak saplings with an unknown genome they're not just vanilla saplings what happens is as soon as you place uh, you know vanilla saplings inside a farm and actually winds up converting them to apple oak saplings which are the uh, trealizer version of them okay so you actually get not just vanilla saplings, but actually, uh, you know, some genome information written to it. So it kind of converts it into Sengir's version of the uh, sapling. So we grab our trealizer here and we can trealize the apple oak sapling. We'll see that not only is the sappiness the lowest rating, so you're going to get very small amounts of biofuel or biogas out of these saplings, but the yield is actually the lowest, and that determines uh, how many uh, saplings you get, I believe. Yes, I think that's true. So the yield is how many saplings you get from the tree. Is that true, or is it... I don't know what the saplings thing means. Uh, yeah. Do you know Mist? Or Marathi? Uh, the, I no. believe the yield refers to... I thought that was the how amount. many saplings you get, right? The amount of saplings? I was... Mm. Uh, let me check. Yeah, now I'm confused. Because the saplings listed here is normal, normal. Yeah, now I'm confused. I'm usually pretty confused as it is. 
I was, I, I was I, pretty sure. Let me go check, guys. I'll be right back, and I'll double check this. All right, so never mind. It's not so much. The, the sapling drop is normal on the oak sapling, but you still get the lowest sappiness, which means you're really going to get a very small amount of biomass. Uh, but we've also got the hill cherry sapling that somebody uh, was kind enough to hook me up with. Uh, that gives you a low amount of sapling, so less saplings than the oak one, okay? Um, but you'll get a uh, low sappiness and normal yield instead of lowest and lowest. So... Uh, I guess it's a really tough call on whether I want to use hill cherry saplings for my little forestry farm or if I want to use uh, regular saplings. And I could have sworn that it was set to low for the apple oak saplings, but maybe Sengir changed it between last version and this. Maybe. I mean, we are a testing version, right? So maybe he's tweaking the numbers a little bit. That could be the case. I don't know. Now I'm confused. I don't know what's happening. I'm so confused. But anyway, we're going to let that tree farm run. We haven't gotten a surplus of saplings just yet. I mean, we're doing pretty good. We're up to 54 oak saplings, and it's uh, been running a little bit. Uh, but there is one problem we're having, and uh, it's basically part of the reason that we haven't gotten an overflow since last time I was logged in. Well, number one, I'm not chunk loading the area, so that's a huge part of it. Uh, number two is this thing keeps uh, jamming up on me. You can see the internal energy of the steam engine is building up. That's because um, the steam engine is pumping its power, and it's even like self-regulating itself. So see how power usage is like a little bit low here? Uh, so it's not even dumping out as much power as it can but it is hitting a point here uh, with the farm where every now and then it's just hitting that maximum peak and then boom it gets stuck and I got to hit it with a wrench which is a manual bit of a process to uh, fix so um, either gonna have to get a different engine hooked up there or I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna have to do I don't know I'll figure it out one way or another all right for now I'll be back I want to get situated and ready to record the episode all right, guys, I'm back. Just finished crafting myself a hobbyist's steam engine because I'm kind of hoping here, and you know what I'm probably going to need? Probably at least need a lever. I'm kind of hoping that the hobbyist steam engine lasts longer than the uh, one from Thermal Expansion because this one keeps, whoa, boy, creepers and zombies and all kinds of bad things. What's up, everybody? Oh, How are you? That was close. All right, I should probably light this area up a little bit better. Shouldn't I? F7 to the rescue. All right, that looks better-ish. Yeah, I like how I'm digging in this area and it's like completely dark and scary. That looks better. Okay, uh, where was I? Right, putting the hobbyist steam engine down. Why hobbyist? Well, I feel like this one needs to be hit with a wrench far too often. You can see it's getting pretty close to getting stacked up, so let's just break it. And then we're gonna uh, replace it with the hobbyists. Cool. Now the only deal with the hobbyists, of course, is I don't think it'll explode but I'm not sure. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the wood in there. The other deal is that it needs a redstone signal, so hence the lever. There we go. Ready to roll. All right, that will get back into action. How are we doing, by the way? Have we... Oh, almost a stack of apple saplings. That means... Oh, great, we are still having a... You know what? He must have changed that figure because I've gotten more apple saplings in the last 10 minutes than I did in, like, a long time between episodes. So he must have changed the sapling drop number. Because I was all kinds of about to make a Steve's Cards tree farm. Because they would use vanilla saplings, which I think would do differently or something. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but... Anyway, things seem to be better. So I'm happy. So now let's work on biofuel. Well, I don't know. Do we need biofuel? I mean, at this point, I'm pretty pleased to keep things, I don't know, running on oil for a little bit, and then we can build up a, a surplus of this stuff, right? We can get a whole bunch of oak saplings. We're getting a lot of wood for that matter. We can probably turn that into something too if we wanted. Um, and then the apples, wow, we're getting a good amount of apples. We're doing pretty good, guys. I'm pleased with this situation that we find ourselves in. Yeah, really pleased. All right, uh, where am I at? Right, let's start working on something different. We'll come back and get the biofuel in another episode, but hopefully the steam engine down there will do its thing. All right, guys, I am back and ready to make something cool. I wanna make myself a power armor tinker table. For this, I'm going to need a machine frame. Is there like some shortcut I can clear the crafting grid with and just put it all back in my inventory? That would be awesome. If it's all the same thing, you can double click an item and it'll pick up everything of that type. Yeah, no. Like, if I'm making something like a piston, like, I kind of have to, like, do a lot of work to get that piston recipe out of the table. If I have more than... Um, the what kind of need. table? Vanilla crafting. Um, yeah, you can just, you can just close it and empty it. 
Yeah, you just yeah, close it and then like pick up all the stuff. Yeah, I hate doing that though. No modular power suit items found in inventory. Make some. Yes, machine use as you wish. As you wish. <laughs> Uh, I want the legs and I want the boots, at least to get started. So we're going to need some wiring. And for this, we're going to need uh, copper, silver, and copper. Oh, boy, am I low on copper. Holy cow, do I not have enough copper for that. You're crazy. You're crazy. There's You're crazy. the other recipe, too. I know. But that's gold. Like, I need to do some mining and get more copper. Basically is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's not terrible. And I made a lot of that stuff because I know I'm going to need it. And then, um, what's the rest here? Uh, for the legs, it's just the wiring and the iron. Okay, cool. So legs, boom. Boom, boom. Okay, why well, you know work. All right. Yeah, because I don't have the recipe book. There we go. Ah, that's not what I wanted to click. Anybody need some power armor leggings? Did you make two? No. <laughs> Come get some sword. <laughs> you, you made eight? I <laughs> made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, Why? Because oh. I did the shift click and then I held shift still when I clicked the recipe output. And oh. I had ten slots available in my inventory. Oops. I mean, it's not that much of a waste. I just wasted a bit of iron. Um, That's much better. I've got an uh, I've got an uncrafting table I could bring if you want. Do you? If you've got XP, I do indeed. Yeah, to go get XP. It. Yeah, I'll take an uncrafting yeah. table. I've actually never I used can, one, even though I have Twilight Forest. I can and stuff. blend it because I like, still use it how, for stuff. How so. many items are in the power armor? The armor itself is not hard to make. It's pretty cheap actually, but it's the <laughs> modules yeah, it's that you add to it that are you know more interesting. Yeah, but oh, okay. like how many item slot things? How, how many item stats does it take to make the armor? It, what? You're saying I suppose things. I can just look it up myself. Yeah, yeah you're, you're saying things, but you're not making sense. I'm going to put an elite battery in here. I can get an energy cell for the, you. Tug, the, you, make, you make the armor, and then you put modules into it, depending on what I you want know. to do. Okay. Apparently you don't, okay. though. Then, but I but want I'm to know how many items it took, and the answer I was looking for is seven, because I just looked it up. Oh, nifty. Uncrafting table. Wait, what items? It, it takes five iron and two wiring, and because with the uncrafting table, it takes a level for every item in the original recipe. Oh, that's going to give me back... Um, the industrial crap version of it. Oh. Refined iron? Oh, hey, there. Electric, yeah, that works. Electronic circuits? Not too bad. You'll need those eventually, right? Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Like, that's actually, like, an interesting effect of being able to make electronic circuits semi-easily than you probably should be able to. Well, no one oh, said okay. the uncrafting table wasn't Overpowered. Just a little bit overpowered. Still nice for uh, supercharged gravity guns to nether stars. Well, there goes all my experience. And I still have one power armor leggings. If you would like it, anyone. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've got a full set. Unfortunately, the head and the chest for me are bugged and cause my client to crash anytime I use them. Well, that's not fun. I mean, I don't need them, but I can craft them for you if you want. No, 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 it's okay. I'm cool. So there's like 39 levels. How many levels did you have? You must have had quite a few to craft. I actually had like 50 something. Jeez. Right, yeah, I would have had more, but I, I would die from many. suffocating in the wall, and your power <laughs> suit doesn't help you with that. Just, just nope. saying. Just saying. Yeah, I want to show you guys uh, on YouTube here the new block from Thermal Expansion. So that's part of the reason that I'm crafting this. 
Oh, hey, look, green. 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 <laughs> yeah, we have a new block from Thermal Expansion, guys, and it's cool. We have two new blocks. We have two? Oh, yeah, we do have two, don't we? Well, that's okay. I, I use the other one, the cyclic assembler. Yeah, how was that? It looked cool. Well, it's basically an automatic crafting table that you can pipe in liquids instead of, like, buckets of liquids, you know. I guess it doesn't really matter what you set the IC2 tier. There's no downside, so I should max it out, right? Yeah. As far as Energetic I can tell, there's no infuser. downside. I'm going to need two transmission coils, and I'm going to need another machine frame and a little bit of copper. You manage that. Barely. People are asking, people are asking why you want stuff dug this deep, Sorn. You're just the monkey laborer, it's not your place to ask questions. You, are you calling my viewers monkey laborers? That's, that's nasty. No, I'm calling you a monkey laborer. Energetic infuser, yay! And while I'm at it, I'm going to need at least one of these, so just grab the whole thing. Energetic infuser, building up some internal power. What does this guy do? Infuse energy into compatible devices. Nice, feel the home. <laughs> that's cool. Wow. Maximum power, 500 Minecraft jewels per tick. Wow, that's a lot of input that you could put into that thing if you needed to. I'm just gonna disable all the output. I guess the top can be the input if we wanted to. And now I should be able to take my armor, which is currently at 750k out of 5 million. Let's see how many Minecraft jewels this thing sucks out of here. Uh, lots. Yeah, it does. Holy cow. 40,000 Minecraft jewels just vanished. And uh, wow, that takes a lot of things. Oh, that's a neat little graphical effect on the front, too, while it's charging. I like that a lot. That's using a lot of power. Holy cow, is this going to drain my redstone energy cell? I suspect yes. Probably. Yeah, my yeah, redstone energy like, cell is like, what are you doing? Yeah, I've got like two redstone energy cells on my system, and every time I charge my suit, it <laughs> drains Lit them both. It doesn't obliterate them. I should probably turn on my combustion engines then, and maybe even my steam engines just to help power things up. I have plenty of wood after all. Yeah, apparently, like, it's better if you charge them in, say, an MFS here. I don't have industrial craft power at all yet, though. But, you know, and also, I like to show new things, so it's a new thing, and I get to show it, so I'm excited by it. Yeah. Like, I have plenty of build craft power, but not so much by way of... I mean, that's probably enough power for my power armor leggings for now. I'll leave them in there, because uh, I'm going to get some items to uh, craft up into my power armor leggings, and I'll be back in a few. I want to get the shock absorber, and I want to get a couple other fancy little gadgets. Be right back. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm just finishing up crafting what I need in my legs. I already put the sprint assist on there to help me move faster. I'm installing the uh, jump power on there, so I'm boosting my jump ability nice and high. Uh, on here, I've got my shock absorber, so when I fall from a fall height, I won't uh, be hurt as much. I should probably get some kind of uh, shielding, maybe diamond plating. What's advanced plating cost me? That cost me a lot of diamonds. Oh, and an Invar gear. Holy cow. I should probably put some kind of plating on uh, my power armor. If I recall correctly, the main difference between this stuff is how much um, weight difference there is. So iron armor has, uh, you know, a better, is heavier than diamond. Um, and it's also more productive, but much harder to make. So yeah, you're going you're gonna to do better uh, with diamond, of course, but iron probably will work. So what's that basic plating? That's not so bad. That's a tin gear with iron on the sides. I need how much of that? Just one. All right. And the same for this, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to get those guys installed. Tin gear, iron, cool. But look at what I've done to my inventory. Like, I already, like, really, really hurt how much stuff I have. <laughs> I'm killing myself, but that's okay. I'm going to need two of these.
Everything in the name of progression, huh? I mean, I want to wear armor that protects me from death, so yeah. That's the plan. Pay to not die sounds cool. Oh, I'm already sprinting fast, and I love it. So what's the total weight that you can have on yourself before you start moving slower? Is it 25 kilograms? Sounds right. I, bet, I sure. believe I it was. And so apparently there's no way to tell how heavy you are? Well, you can add it up in the interface. It tells you how much weight oh, each yeah. item weight. uses. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have, like, a base weight? No. Like, just a bare piece of armor doesn't have any weight. It's only when you, like, add plating or, uh, like, heat sink shields or batteries and other modules that have uh Oh, that is cool. Oh, yeah, I like the like sound effects she added. Or have you guys heard that yet? Have, like, no, it's when the total weight of your suit exceeds 25 kilograms, then you slow down. Ah, uh, okay. Soren, did you hear this uh, nifty sound effect that was added here? Oh, the squeak sound whenever your servo is act uh, activated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. Where are you at, Soren? Portal. Ah, your portal or mine? Hear it? And then... That's cool. You don't hear that? I guess no, I... No, I think you only hear your own. Only it doesn't hear your play own. it to other people. Yep. Here, give it a shot, Soren. Just do like a really tall jump. And when you land, it makes a slightly different sound. You like? Woot. How am I for armor while wearing this stuff? Pretty good. Not bad. All right, guys. We'll be back. All right. We're right. back. Next project that's important for me, assembly table. So I'm getting one of them with some lasers. Hmm. Do I want this in here? Or do I want it maybe over here? Uh, or over here? Well, this was my, uh, this is planned to be my IC2 area. Hmm. The only problem is getting power to the lasers here. It's going to be ugly on the outside of my house. Which, granted, is not the most attractive house in the world at this point. But, you know, I'll get there eventually. Pretty it up a little bit. Or Axe will come visit. She'll help. And now that Soren's here, you know, he'll do the work too. But, hmm, lasers. Uh, how to power them and not be terribly ugly. I mean, I could throw them on the roof here. That could probably work. That wouldn't be terrible, terrible. I don't think. Probably requires more of these, though. Oh, well, let's at least get crafting on the uh, lasers. I'm thinking three of them to get started. All right, three lasers is good to go. We've got 10 diamonds left, which is a nice number. And now for the redstone energy cell conduits. Where do we want to put these? I mean, I could throw them on this wall. Eh, it wouldn't be awful. Because this really is kind of the front of my house. So, like, people coming up to it will constantly see, you know, wires and cabling and stuff. I don't like that too much. Let me think. I'll be back. All right, guys, this is not a pretty or nice or elegant solution, but it'll work. Yeah, not great, but works, kind of. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't look good at all, does it? That's all right. For now, it'll at least get me going with what I want to do. Um, I'll come up with a better one, maybe even between this episode and next, and, you know, kind of start working on making this look a little better we dug in a dire world says marathi oh yeah why is that um we did start in soren's house and ended up here oh um, so what like you you dug your way over yeah there's a tunnel underneath cool aha portal 
It'd be a long distance for me to like tunnel. <laughs> so let's see, these three lasers should all function? Yes, good, they do. Uh, so I need, right now I made the assembly table specifically so I could automate the redstone energy cell. I'm tired of manually turning on and off my combustion engines, also my steam engines. I could probably throw more wood into them and, uh, you know, nobody would complain too much, right? Uh, but they're probably going to go away and maybe get replaced with three more combustion steam engines once I get, uh, you know, more stuff going on. But for now, at least I can do this. Cool. Redstone turning into redstone chipset. We should probably get a little bit of iron as well. I think that's probably enough to get the iron. I don't know if I need the iron. I probably will. I'm thinking I will, yeah. So we'll craft both of these things up. That should be good. All right, I'll be back in a few once this thing is done. I'm back. And Soren, our base is merged now? Where are our bases merged at? Go down ladder. Oh, in my basement? I was looking. Did I miss it? Oh, it's over there. Ah. Oh, that's neat. Cool. Underground base to Soren's base. Awesome. And uh, I see somebody came by with Moonworm Queen. Yep. Nice. All right, so what's this guy up to? He's up to like 4.5. So my question is, what conditional should I put on this gate? No energy, energy stored, can store energy, full energy. That's all I got, huh? Because I'd really like these things to turn on when it's low and then turn off when it's full, but not turn on again when it's like, you know, half of, you know, MJ below, right? Like if it's 599999, I don't care. It doesn't need to turn on for that. So that's not easy. Like, I kind of want, like, a RS Norlatch almost. But I guess, like, between full can store, like, it would need to be, like, turn on when empty and turn off when full. Which would be a little bit of a nuisance to make. Hmm. I could probably manage something, though, couldn't I? I would think. I'm sure you can figure something out. I think I can. Just a matter of... Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I can manage this. Give me a minute, guys. All right, guys, I get to show you another new item. Uh, brand new, relatively brand new. I think it's pretty new. I don't know. I'm making myself a gate reader. Cool. This is the Computercraft MISC Peripherals Gate Reader that's used with computers, but that's not the new item. I'm also going to craft myself a computer. And that's awesome. All right, guys, so what am I going to make for you? Network cabling. Ooh, fancy. Uh, this is new and fancy stuff uh, from the Computercraft mod, and I'm going to show you how it works. And it does work with MISC peripheral stuff. So uh, we can hook up, basically, some cool things. And I'm going to show you how this stuff works right now. Uh, we're also going to need a wired modem. So not a big deal. We're actually going to need two of them, uh, which is why I was cooking up more stone. Wired modem. As opposed to the wireless modem, we've got the wired modem. Ha! Nifty. So how does this thing work? Well, it allows you to take a peripheral and hook it up to a computer that's not sitting right next to it, which is actually going to work really well for us. And I'll tell you why. Because I want to have a gate reader right here that can read the status of my redstone energy cell. And then I'm going to run down here. Uh, but in order for this cabling to connect between our uh, computer, which I'm going to put here, and the, the network cabling, we have to use the wired modem. Boom. And notice that when you have the wired modem connected, now all of a sudden they're connected. Cool. The other thing you need to do, uh, you can connect two computers this way. So you can have like, you know, two pieces of information transmitted. Just like with wireless modems, you can transmit information, but you can also uh, connect up peripherals. So monitors and printers and computer craft by itself. And you can also do this with all the missed peripherals, peripherals awesome. Uh, if you want to connect peripherals though, you want to right click on the modem and you'll get that little red thing. So once it turns red, that means it's in peripheral mode and it's ready to connect the computer and the gate reader. And you can see there peripheral gate reader connected. 
awesome. I'm going to edit a quick test program to demonstrate how this works. So real quick, uh, you just run this get names program, and it'll okay, go ahead so and pull up all the names. Top does work. And it'll pull up all the names of the peripherals that are connected to the computer at the moment. And uh, it stores it in a table, so I'm just printing all the entries in that table with that next little for loop. And we run the test command, and boom. You can see one peripheral is on the top. That's actually the modem itself. The other one is the gate reader. So it, the uh, computer here, as you can see, does see the gate reader right up there. And uh, in order to connect to that guy, we have to do the following. Just wrap the peripheral and pass it that variable, that names variable that we created up here. And then the number two, because it was the second one, right? So, you know, if we were to go over here and test, we can see that peripheral number two is the gate reader. So that's the one we want to wrap uh, by saying peripheral.wrap names bracket two. Uh, you could also pass it that information, uh, which was, uh, I think it was, what was it? I think you could also just say gate reader underscore zero, and that would work as well. Um, but, you know, either way. So I could just say if I wanted to, gate reader underscore zero. Cool. That should work. And then we can do uh, treat this gate reader the name, way we would normally get, which is gate, which is the peripheral, dot get. And then we can print, uh, well, now we'll do it in the loop. So let's see if that worked for us. All right, guys, for some reason that crashed the server, but then I ran it again and it's working now. So I don't know what caused it to crash. I'm gonna have to do a little testing. But as you can see here, we are reading information from the Redstone Energy Cell. Uh, it's not full, it's not empty. It can currently store energy and energy stored is uh, also true. So we can see that this guy is in a good conditional position. Uh, so I'm gonna write a little program between this episode and next uh, for the computer here to read from the gate uh, and determine if the Redstone Energy Cell is empty. If it's empty, I'll uh, emit a redstone signal, like right here, dur, 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 and uh, turn all this cool stuff on. And if it is full, I'll turn off the redstone signal. That way, it will only turn on uh, for a full cycle. That's not like a plan. The only other thing I'll have to do is enable this to high instead of low, uh, so that these guys, you know, run when a redstone signal is applied as opposed to turn off. What do you think, Soren? Nice plan? You like it? Yeah, not bad, right? So that's the plan. So today's episode, we got to see two new items. Uh, we got the uh, this nifty little gadget right here that charges our suits, the energetic infuser. And I'm actually going to use this to test. I'm going to go ahead and throw my uh, power armor in there, completely drain my uh, redstone energy cell, and then hopefully we should see the computer turn it on. And I'll come back next episode and show you guys that everything's working. Uh, but for now, we got to wrap up. I'm sorry. We are pretty close to, if not pretty far past, the wrapping up point. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, lots of stuff I want to get through this season. I want to really get into applied energistics. We only started touching on it in Forgecraft 2. Um, there was just a, you know, very little time on Forgecraft 2 to really get deep into anything. It was really more just like an interlude, like I said. But we have a lot of cool stuff to get to. Uh, want more modular power suits. Want to build some more tech. Probably start up on a distro craft. Got to get a thong craft room going. There's just so much to get started on and start working on. So for now, we got to get going. All right, guys, take it easy.